themselves into position for what are we going to win with. Well, let's see how they switch it up here in the picks and bans the second time. LeBlanc and Kinnon, we didn't get to see him in game number one. We're not going to get to see him here in game number two. The team's That's okay. keeping them out of here. I don't really like those ones anyways. <laughs> Too yeah, much those, those ones aren't my favorites. We'll uh, just go ahead and leave them I've always the hated LeBlanc. Uh, just as a jungler, she's so been so frustrating to gank you know, in the past iterations where they're passing all that. And... Uh, <laughs> A lot of a fidget you, you, spinner. <laughs> Captain Flowers is completely tilted by the fidget spinner for some reason. I feel like they're just so they're just so common that it's not that big of a deal. I mean, he's uh, cosplaying Kenan right now with his little. But Kenan's fan. That's the problem. That's why I'm. That's my why I'm my biggest thing with with those is that when you're when it's actually spinning in your hand, it doesn't really feel weighty, right? It doesn't really feel important until you like. Kind of move it around and you get a little bit of the uh, yeah, torque going. A little bit of the uh, inertia. Other yeah. than that, uh, eh, whatever. That's that's neither here nor there. Yeah. I'm What's actually, here or there? I'm actually pro fidget spinner, even though I don't own oh one. God. I think it's fine, and people should should calm down with. Oh, their... I thought you were saying you were a pro spinner of fidgets. Oh. Like you were a pro level that would be fidget gross. spinner. That yeah. Would I, be I, gross. I, I was like, what do you mean you're a pro at this? Like this isn't MLG. <laughs> like I've not, I don't I don't own one. Meanwhile, though. <laughs> okay. We're back into the fans. We're back into the fans. Big play making here for uh, Team Ding Toss Big again. You know, a big smile on his face after last game. He got to play the Rakan. He enjoyed he had fun it with so it, man. much. Uh, he had fun with they it. They prioritized it. And honestly, I had fun watching it because he did have some really cool plays on it. There were some awesome initiations, like what hey, you talked about with- we got to see the alley-oop one. Yeah, we got to see the alley-oop one off of the invisible twitch. He did some cool moves. I'm excited to see him on it again. We're gonna get to see Mike Young this time though, instead of Shrimp, he's on the Lee Sin. See if maybe he can get some of those plays. Uh -huh. Like what we saw, I'm still remembering Shrimp's kick onto Arrow's Ash as well. That should have been a kill and ultimately uh, yeah. goes people, south. People got scared of that Galio big blast zone showing up. All right, let's talk about some theorycrafted plays for the Bromley Sin, though. So All right. I, this is my funnest game. All right, what do you got? What do you uh, got? Basically, it's not that exciting. It's just uh, bottom lane focus by Lee Sin, because Lee Sin's super powerful early game. Everybody knows. We all cast say it like every single game. At least right. Sin, ah, so good, you know, ganking early on. Brom lanes um, are really good at actually punishing uh, Rakan and turning things around like that. With the passive, stacking up for those stuns. If there's an overcommitment um, towards uh, an offensive move here from Rakan, uh, Lee Sin visitation is, is something that can really turn around, uh, especially if you do have the Braum, because he easily was able to proc that stun, and you get those chase down kills. That being said, though, obvious answer is Elise is locked in, so playmaking on both sides, early level threes, and these are the basic, the most classic jungler, junglers that we've had for years now. Yeah, they do a little bit of everything. They're always viable unless they're just currently nerfed into the ground in terms of numbers but yeah. that's not the case right now so they're both still going to be in there and they're both locked in this game talia also picked up this time by phoenix one ryu will be on that all right so a little bit more you know ability to affect the side lanes here for ryu in the last game they did get a slight lead for him ganking mid lane burning some summoners off keen but it never really grew into into something else, right? Mm -hmm. This time around with Talia, you have the mobility. You have the ability to also shove waves very quickly. Uh, so we'll maybe see if Ryu can get off some early ganks, get some roaming in for himself, and, and really work with Mike Young to to pull off some of those plays. Because one of the biggest things with, with Talia is jungler plus mid laner interactions. And you can see by the way the second half of these bands are going, what the Galio flex pick potential does to a team. Because on the side of Phoenix One, they ban away both a mid laner and a top laner from their opponents, just saying, look, we don't know which one it is. We're going to hit both pools anyway. Exactly. Going to take them off the board. And Phoenix One was thinking about taking Lod's specialty pick away from them there for a second, hovering over the Twitch, but yeah. decided against it. Goes with the Varus instead. All right, so that is a lot of crowd control then from the bottom lane of Phoenix One. Obviously, Braum and Varus can combine to pull in place for quite a while. No surprise for Team Dinktoss, though. Very similar stuff here. They're actually taking a lot of the tools that Phoenix One picked in the last game. Ash initiation, uh, you know, a diver plus Galio. <laughs> Actually, they just, have, they just have far too much playmaking ability with this stick toss lineup yeah. and they lock in the Darvin as well. <laughs> that is an insane amount of playmaking. 
That is so many ways to start fights and make things happen. And picking the Jarvan blind too. I mean, Jarvan has the burst to deal with squishy top laners and he has the armor shred to deal with the tanky ones. So you feel pretty comfortable with it. And I do like, you know, picking Jarvan when Fiora is banned because Fiora is so good into him. Um, but the Kled is also a pretty decent matchup. Um, and I do like that Zig has gone for this one. This is one of the more favorable ones, I think, for Kled. Um, I like his commitment into the Jarvan. It, it, it definitely does have outplayability there. But, you know, as we said, it's, it's going to be about this team game here. And Team Nick Dias have ridiculous amounts of crowd control. So we shall see if the roaming game gets off the ground for Phoenix One. Phoenix One have the Talia wall to work with. Air, uh, Ryu can go to either side lane. And then Zig as well on the Kled can force initiation. So. Very excited to hear to, uh, to see these two clash. Will Phoenix One be able to turn this series around and force that game number three? That is the question. These team comps kind of remind me of what we saw from the teams in the first game, right? Because you've got Ryu and you've got Zig on champions that can rotate around the map and play the objective game in a really strong manner. You can wall people off from turrets and take them down. Phoenix One played an objective game. Meanwhile, Dignitas just says, we're going to kill your dudes. And that's how we're going to win the game. The objectives will come later once we've killed enough dudes. But dude killing is where we're starting this game off. All right. Let's get into part number two of dude killing, man. <laughs> the Dignitas objective. It won him game number one. Keen was one of the ones who was really in charge of that. This game, he's going to be taking more of a supportive type role. Not going to be on that victor. This has me curious now. What What is your sort of theme when you play League of Legends, Captain Flowers? Are you, are you on board with dude killing? Or are you... Uh, yeah, I usually just go, I play League of Legends to kill dudes. Okay. <laughs> that's that's part of what I go for. You just look for a dude to fight, and you're like, hey, I'm going to get you. Okay. All right. Well, first order of business is uh, Raptor Wards. Yep, that's Not always dudes. something. And uh, we'll see if uh, anybody goes for a kill. I'm still waiting for the sweeper start for somebody, because that's always mm. you know, fun to see. But again, unlucky. In we didn't have experience quints last time around either, so I don't expect there to be any of those shenanigans coming around today. Maybe only if we get a game three. Maybe. Maybe if we get a game three, they'll be willing to put it all on the line. But this time around, everybody's playing safe. Yeah, I always do also look more for level one stuff when you see champions like Braum in here. You know, we talked about playmaking there. There is even some decent level one stuff here. Uh, chase down potential for early kills with Braum is super big level one due to the passive, so. A little bit surprised, but, you know, not too much. Everybody just kind of fanning out for the classic defense. And uh, the only little wrinkle we'll have here is that Lee Sin, Mike Young here, not going to start on the Raptors for the extra experience. And he's going to do a route starting on his blue that will end on the top side. So I think he does want to meet the Elise here. I talked about the Kled being fairly nice into the Jarvin. I'm wondering if they actually want to put more focus on that top lane and try and get Zig, uh, you know, some early advantages for his one versus one with Someday up on top and, and continue with that strategy. Because Mike Young starting down here on blue side is definitely abnormal with the Lee Sin. Meanwhile, a completely normal start for Shrimp up there at his own Raptor camp. That's one of the nicest parts about having the Galio too. You get an awesome Raptor leash for whoever your jungler is. Yeah, that's always so nice to get the the really strong Raptor leashes. And we'll see, even more curious as this route develops. He's going for the power clear so far. So it's not the early end up on top lane to affect the 2v2. And Shrimp, because uh, Mike Young's doing the kind of power clear here and getting all the camps on the bottom side, Shrimp has the opportunity, though he doesn't know it and hasn't had any vision of Mike Young, you know, to move up there quicker if he went right after this double buff. but. We'll see if this scuttle crab actually draws any attention. That is usually a, a big point to go after when you do have these double melee matchups that uh, can be turned pretty heavily by jungler intervention. Shrimp's just going for his own Gromp. Both sides seem content clearing through their jungle. Ah, they spotted him. Yep, Hawkshot's going to get a look at him right there. All right, it'll just be the power clear then. So it, it's a very efficient power clear coming from the bottom side for, uh, for Lee Sin. But uh, as we said, that does kind of give the initiative over to Shrimp to pull off the first move. Good there from Ryu, going to get some vision for his jungler. They did 
they did have a theory that Shrimp would go up here because of the Hawk shot, uh, you know, and try and get that deep vision. So Ryu does go over to try and cut off his move. Too bad for him, though. Shrimp utilizes the auto attack reset W on Elise, kills the ward, and continues with the invade and preps himself for this dive. Seeing if maybe they can go for something here, but remember, Kled is tricky to dive sometimes. A little bit. The uh, dismount uh. really troll you if you're not prepared for it. They go for some damage, but as the bear trap on a rope would proc, instead the rappel comes up and Shrimp gets out. Well played by Zig there, utilizing the minions. Now can Keen do the same? Taunt enough to block some damage. Sonic Wave into Resonating Strike. Mike Young goes underneath the turret to put some extra damage on there. As meanwhile, bottom lane, Big and Lod. Trying to trade back and forth here with Shady and Arrow. That Braum, very, very tanky. All right, Summoner Spell down in the mid lane to watch. Galio, though, can always default to farm mode and just spam out the Wings of War. So Keen doesn't have to put himself in another uh, vulnerable position. He might have to give up some CS to play that way, but it uh, shouldn't be too big of an issue. We'll see if Mike Young can continue to camp and actually force something there, though, because as we said, they would love to get this Talia some open space to work with. And a flash down plus teleport down on Galio is a point where they can continue to pressure to try and pry this game open and allow Ryu to enter Rome. And we saw Phoenix 1 in game number one have a solid early game. They just need to be able to hold on to it in game number two and translate that into more based off of the objectives they were able to acquire and the plays that they were able to make. This time around, with that Talia and with that Kled, the synergy between the two of them, like you mentioned in Champion Adam. Select, you can get those guys rolling around the map together really, really easily. You can block off Drake, you can block off turrets, you can make plays all over the place. Just put a wall up behind them, put Kled's X right on the spot next to the wall, and run them down. Definitely true. Hawkshot again is on point from Laud as well, so... Not only do you want to, you know, be able to find the jungler with it, but the timer on the camps is actually pretty important. And you will, the higher you get, more and more junglers keep track of the minute 40 respawns on the small camps, not just buffs that you're looking for uh, there, as the small ones really help you continue to track the enemy jungler through those pockets of fog of war. All right, somebody just forced to cancel his recall there. It might delay it a little bit. Yeah, not uh, too big of a deal. Not see if he's on yet. point with number three here. Nice one from Lodge. Should be able to hit. Yup. Finds Mike Young right there hanging out in the chicken pit. And he'll get another timer on the chicken pit. That'll be 742, 743, the respawn. So they should be able to keep track of him there. See, did Shrimp leave the small Krug? Did he just take the big one away? Yeah. Yep, yeah. just took the big one. Wanted to leave that poor little baby Krug there instead. So only 30 gold goes the way of Mike Never Young. even got to grow up. Nope. Mike It'll Young never be a pork. big, big fat Krug. It's just going to be that little poor baby one. Oh, no! Oh, this timing could be tragic for Zig. Shrem shows up into the top lane, finds the cocoon. The burst damage comes out. Zig gets himself into a decent enough spot to have Mike there. Yeah, so what you want to do when you have a, a um, Kled in lane like this is, as a jungler, I would push up to allow Kled to get his autos off to remount before I left. Oh, but here comes the burst. I don't know if he'll get away in time. Wow. He won't. Shrimp's got the first blood. You see, you're not safe on Kled in mini form. You know, he's just a Yordle walking around, super short legs. No way he could dodge that. <laughs> you're only fast if you're charging somebody. Right. So number one priority, actually, when you are a jungler coming to help out your Kled, uh, let him remount, you know, push up for him so he can get those auto attacks off because it was super dangerous for Zig there. He didn't have any options. No. Meanwhile, uh, we got a little exchange here around mid lane. But uh, yeah, remember, your top laners will appreciate that if you just allow them to get back up on their cowardly steed. Yeah, if he would have had his chocobo back there, he would have been in a lot better of a spot. Because so it's two things here. The minion wave not pushing towards him. Um, yeah, going for that ward. You can definitely criticize him for going for that ward. Yeah. Because he is so vulnerable, and that's you know, always a risky thing to do and almost never worth it up against an Elise, because if you're in ward range, you're in cocoon range. So uh, it is also a lot of Zig's fault. However, uh, I do really uh, always encourage junglers to help them remount. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, we saw the arrow fire off and flash being blown there from Arrow himself. 
and that's pretty big. I mean, again, this is another champion that doesn't have built-in escape mechanisms. With Flash down, that means somebody's got to jump in front of it, or he's got to be real, real careful to not be in there. More Hawk shots fired into that jungle time and time and time again. Lod is making sure he's not sleeping on keeping track of Mike. Yeah, he's doing a good job of it. That one just barely misses. Mike Young uh, cleared out the wolves just in time and was able to escape for now. Tiamat done on some day there in the top lane. Done for Zig as well. Going to see really standard builds out of these top laners. The classic Bruiser build, Tiamat into the Black Cleaver, into the Titanic Hydra evolution. Just the standard these days for top laners to make sure that they're effective at both dealing damage to the enemy carry, as well as surviving in the fights thanks to the big health pool. While the junglers, Runic Echoes plus that Tracker's Knife already completed for Shrimp means he does a lot of damage and he can help kind of keep track of what's going on around the map. A little bit slower progression here for Mike Young, who is still setting on the Caulfield's Warhammer, doesn't have his Tracker's Knife yet either, so taking a little bit longer to make sure he gets that money spent and comes online. He does have it in his pocket to spend, just has to go back and get it. That's a good feeling, though. You got money in your pockets, just waiting to go to the store, cash in. But it's a better feeling after you go to the store and you got the stuff that you wanted to buy. Exactly. Much better to actually hold the items. That's why, really, that top lane play was so important and why we, you know, stayed on it for a while and kept talking about it, because the first blood going over to Elise, she's such a er good early snowballing champion. Now you really got to worry about uh, this brush. They'll, they'll know that one person is in there with that hit, but it doesn't reveal necessarily that the Elise is also down there. Right. Could just be thinking, okay, Big's in the brush. We managed to nick him once with the arrow. No big deal. And arrow still doesn't have flash. Ooh. Here comes the playmaking potential. Arrow comes out, stun out onto the Braum, but the root onto Elise could be trouble here. Shrimp goes up into the air, exhaust onto Mike Young. Dignitas will disengage. And sinks there as Lee Sin hovering around bottom side for the counter gank. And a uh, little bit of a couple misses there, but good disengages. Important to note how this jungle dynamic changes up, too, after they hit level 6. Elise is level 6, not big impact. Lee Sin's the opposite. Lee Sin's definitely is, and he is in command still of the dragon kick, so somebody's going to get flash kicked. Not going to be in the bottom lane, though, as both junglers leave, and the line of control wards for both sides still stands offensively, but Lod is just on him again with the hawk shots, constantly tracking him. These Hawkshot drones are just never leaving Mike Young alone throughout the entirety of this early game. Hats off to Lod for making sure he's doing a good job. Always keeping track of that. First Drake, by the way, is Mountain. It's pretty juicy, pretty desirable of neutral objective to find. So both these teams could be turning their attention towards that if they can find themselves a fight win or a turret pick up or... That anything. mountain juice, huh? That mountain juice, yeah, the mountain. <laughs> it's like chocolate flavored. Yeah, man. Oh, shrimp! Shrimp in some trouble. Oh, Having to try to get the himself away. The Galio <laughs> comes into the fight. Shrimp now, what can they do? He's caught up between a rock and a hard place and a Talia, which means a lot more rocks. And Shady's the one grabbing the kill oh. as Mike Young is stomped into the dirt before he can find the kill on to Keen. Zig makes his way into the fight with the DP. Someday now having to try to run, flash over the wall, but Zig is in hot pursuit. Keen tries to provide some covering fire, but it's not going to do it today. Phoenix won. It's two for one. Ah, so he did see him go for the flash kick, but Repel negated it for a while and had to wait for the delay. That allowed the counter kill to come through, but in the end, Phoenix One still get the two for one and are able to, you know, kind of overload members on the bottom side. No objectives pressure through, though, because it, it was definitely a very big back and forth there. An interesting little uh, DPS given out at the end, even though Sunday does eventually get chased down. Let's take a look here. So, they catch Shrimp out, able to get the stun on him, but ooh, kick is delayed long enough for Galio to come in. And that kind of forces him to the other side here. So, Keen unloading his DPS there into Mike Young allows Someday to finish it off. Then he walks away himself. But Someday turns around a little bit there, uh, kind of wanting Zig to complete the teleport. I think he wanted to make sure that Zig used the full cooldown of the teleport and like didn't cancel it there, but he got too close and didn't have his EQ cooldowns up. So he gets tagged up and the chase potential of Braum definitely comes to fruition there with the extra kill going over to Phoenix One and that, that gold definitely gonna be put to good use. Now they're gonna overload topside. Pushing down top means that Phoenix One could be going for turret first blood again here in game number two. 
They got it for themselves in game number one, which was part of the reason why they had those early gold leads that they did. If they can get it this time around, it'll likely be telling a same story. They're only slightly behind in terms of the overall economy right now. But Sunday moves in in time to stop that. Meanwhile, that Mountain Drake, that Mountain Juice we were talking about earlier is going to be a tasty treat for Shrimp and the rest of Team Dignitas. Some more objective control as the game goes on. I do love that Mountain Juice. Uh, it really puts so much more threat onto the Baron uh, baits that we are probably going to see uh, as this game develops because it's staying so close here through the mid game. Um, and you talked about how many tools both teams have, right? How, how much initiation, oh, yeah. how much crowd control. The playmaking ability is very high in this game. And, and Mountain Drake puts so much more emphasis on the vision baits around Baron, on, on those neutral objectives and, and people setting up for picks. Just taking a second off of the time it takes to secure some kind of objective like that can change whether or not a play is good or bad. But now Ryu and Keen just slugging each other back and, and forth, blow for blow, as the rest of the teams come in looking to make the fight. Stuns out onto a couple different people. Shady and Arrow finding themselves in a spot to help Mike get the first kill as Shrimp will up. also drop along with Keen. Two dead on the side of Dignitas, looking to see if they can make it three. <laughs> Phoenix One sends in the cavalry charge, and Big is going to be roped up and brought down. Lod won't be able to do anything to save him. Oh my goodness, Phoenix One instantly collapsed without even the teleport there. Zig is able to ult down to cut off the extra kill, and this time around, they're pressuring on the turret. They should be able to beat Someday, who's trying to take first turret gold on top side. Yeah, there's no chance he catches up the three members, and no. Phoenix One will claim it. Phoenix One with turret first blood, plus three kills heading their way. That is how you do an early game. Now up over 2,000 gold thanks to that one. Yeah, no hesitation there as they immediately go for the 2v2. You see, Shrimp is almost just as close to this, but Mike Young immediately joins Ryu for that 2v2. So uh, right off the board, there's a member advantage here for Phoenix One. And the duo lane coming up first meant there was no escape. So, you know, Lot is pretty much cut off from the whole fight. He never got to participate until the very end here, at which point Big is already dead. The trap has been set, it closes shut, and Phoenix One able to get a bunch of kills as well as the very important first turret goal. Now Dignitas is the team finding themselves having to think, okay, do we really want to take this next fight? Is this really worth actually fighting over? And this puts Phoenix One in a spot where those things that we talked about in Champion Select, the walls and the cavalry charges and all these tools that they have to move around the map and force these issues are going to come in handy because when you've got the lead, that's when you can start thinking with those and saying, look, we're going to make a move here, here, or here, and you can really be decisive. Well, here, here, here is now Rift Herald's pit as Mike Young's looking to pick that one up again to help out with getting down that last outer turret. What am I saying about last? They just traded another one there. There's plenty of them left. Uh, top side, though, it looks like Zig with the Kled has gotten enough pressure that they won't need to use it even. So nope. Rift Herald can be saved for, you know, maybe a push on bottom side or, or uh, even in mid lane. And they are just going to bring down the extra members to bully Someday off that top turret, eventually getting it. Looks like they'd like to get the Rift Herald to find the tier two take here. Someday the only person around defending this means it shouldn't be an issue for Phoenix One to find that. Yeah, four members. Oh, Rift Herald charges in, takes out over half the HP, and that'll be all she wrote. Continuing to march it down this top side. They're going to stick by this Rift Herald. This is not a set it and forget it, abandon it, and get yeah. the one turret. If you, if you put your love into Rift Herald to protect... Oh! But now the counterattack has come. The Galio knockup onto multiple people. Someday being forced to flash back as Phoenix One will not be running away today. They turn the fight right back towards Dignitas, oh who now have goodness. to retreat. Health bar is critical. Big barely walked away from that one as Shady goes what? too deep. He misses the winner's bite and drops. Oh, Shady all by himself. Nobody is with him. Now Someday's looking to clean up. Someday wants to go over the wall if he can. A double kill there for Shrimp. Arrow's actually going to get away. This was a hilarious turn of events. And it just got goofier. Shrimp walked a turning. bit too close. <laughs> Round and round we go. Meanwhile, that whole time, that play was initiated without the damage of Lod, which initially I was going to say, oh, why are Team Dictos going for this big play on bottom side while their AD carry is split pushing? But because Shady dives the turret, because Someday is able to get that teleport off behind them, delay the backs, and get the counter kills off, 
the split push worked out. And Lod's yeah. able to get two turrets on the bottom side right up to the inhibitor. It's one of those things where Lod says, I told you guys. Oh my goodness. All right, so initially here we're like, all right, look at all the crowd control, but they're lacking in damage. So there's no damage backing up this initiation from uh, Team Dignitas. But you can tell, Someday just left your screen. He was the one who started that fight. He ran to the fountain, healed up fully, then teleports in the backside on the ward you can see right now. Meanwhile, Shady flashes in, diving big and misses his Q. Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> question mark things. And someday, because of his, the presence of mind in this guy, this is why I keep on talking about how much I, I like someday as an overall player. Not only do we see him go off in games and carry in the top lane, even in games where he's not massively ahead or doesn't have a split push champion or, or something like that, just makes such intelligent plays and, and calculated plays around even losing situations. But uh, regardless there, a bunch of counter kills going back. You also saw the shove there from Ryu, killing shrimp, so <laughs> gold flying around. Yeah, that was just everybody throws their money up into the air and you see how much you can grab off the floor. Both teams just... <laughs> the money tank? <laughs> the money tank, baby. All sorts of a fiesta happening in that fight. Now we're going to see yet another one. The root and the lockdown on to Big seals his fate, and that's a freebie for Phoenix One. Now Dignitas in retreat as P1 looks to make it even more. Laws locked Great. down and beat up as Shrimp gets himself in a spot where he's not going to be doing a whole lot more. Two for two so far. Someday in the middle of the fight, Arrow going to be taken very low. Shrimp still looking to find the kill. A triple kill, though, for Ryu as Shrimp gets himself killed. Only oh. left alive. One versus two. I don't know if it's going to work out too well today. Trying to get himself gone, but he is going nowhere but right back to the spawn platform. Oh, he got a it! Pentakill for Ryu! Oh, holy man! A pentakill with Talia in a 5v5 mid-game where the gold is very, <laughs> very low. 20 minutes! That is actually insane to be able to get that many last hits on, on a skill shot champion like that. And this is the type of game you see where there are that many tools <laughs> and that much initiation. <laughs> Holy moly, I'm glad that they Woo! delivered with this one. Let's take a look at the start, because once one person is in, they're all in. Everybody's got crowd control to back it up with. Ryu gets down the wall to chase them. Flash kick there from Mike Young again to get the trade kill this time around. And then you think that Zig teleported too far away and he's not going to arrive in time, but he does because Arrow and Ryu kite out for long enough, and the threaded volleys just keep on coming through. Holy moly, and then he's finally able to get it here. That red buff being picked up early on from Ryu as well helped out so much. Not only the extra damage there to uh, get the rest of his kills, but the health regeneration definitely pays off in a fight that long. When you go from one kill to six kills in a single fight, now you are the hero of the day. Six, zero, and four on that Talia. The Andres Torment, Morello Namacon, Sorcerer's Shoes, and another Blasting Wand already there building the next item. Ryu, last game, he was the one who had to go up against the monster that was Keen with the victor with the 7-0 and 4 scoreline. This time around, he's the dude who's the boogeyman in the closet that his opponents are going to have to worry about. I do enjoy these money tank games, Captain. This is, <laughs> this is fun. And Ryu's the one picking up all the cash right now. As you said, extremely fed. And that is the person with the possibility of creating the biggest plays. Mid-game, Talia can utilize this wall for, you know, splitting up Team Dignitas, going for objectives. Right now, they're fighting over Vision. Here he comes. The wall's nope. thrown down. Dignitas. Nope. Everything's fine. Just backing away for now. The charm out. This one's finding its way onto Arrow. He's going to be bursted down very quickly. Still alive for now. Not for long. See you later. Airborne, though. Two members of Dignitas going to immediately be erased as the health bars continue to melt away. A double kill for Ryu will turn this into a one for three. All right, Zig's still on the chase as well. Doesn't have his ultimate, but he's right behind him. Zig versus Big, and Mike Young's taking the kill credit. <laughs> Ryu's still able to push this wave up as well. That should be a very calm Baron. After all the action that we've seen, <laughs> uh, and all the members have dropped now, it's only Lod who has a chance of stealing. No, he doesn't have his arrow cooldown even. So this is 100%. Nope. Phoenix One reaping their rewards. Pentakill for Ryu, gets a couple good more kills here. Still hasn't died in this game. Now he's legendary, barreled up as well. And Phoenix One are not going down without a fight this game. They really want to push it to game number three. All right, Big starts it off with that charm onto the Varus, and they take him down. But it doesn't matter because Ryu is so fed. 
ridiculous amounts of damage coming out of him. Mike Young goes out there, chases off the back line here, and Phoenix One are coming back swinging. And you could see that Big tried to get on to Ryu, but he couldn't because the threaded volley was keeping him just slow enough that the quickness could not catch up to that very, very fed Talia. So now Phoenix One, man, the world is their oyster. They get to crack everything open. They get to take whatever they want. And it's very, very hard for Dignitas to try to defend against this. Those barrened up minions, real, real difficult for Lot at this point in time. He's got Infinity Edge and Shiv, but whew, this team is 7,000 gold down. Definitely becomes very tricky now. 7,000 gold down, no vision to speak of out on the map, just a couple of sparse wards here in their own defensive jungle. And Team Dictatus are just trying to farm for late, trying to defend their turrets while the, the barrened up siege is coming through from Phoenix One. Now, they have already sent Ryu down to collect this bottom wave, and they should be able to cl clean up this secondary turret pretty easily. Then the crunch time really becomes. Since it's so early in the game here, only 24 minutes, how quickly are Phoenix One actually going to press inside for an inhibitor turret kill? Because those big neutral objectives, you know, you're gonna have to wait another two minutes for for uh, the Baron buff to expire. So there's a lot of time to work with. They don't have to necessarily rush in and they actually use it as a diversion. They cut off everyone defending bottom lane. What a nice switcheroo here from Phoenix One. They faint the bottom side. Phoenix One with the bamboozle onto their opponents as Dignitas now mounts their counterattack. Zig immediately dismounted from Skarl, trying to make this fight happen, get right back up there. Legendary for Ryu taking down Keen. The push continues, the charge is sounded. Zig's underneath the Nexus turrets, finding the burst. Gets himself the damage, drops the aggro, and it's a clean ace for P1. Oh man, they are not playing around. 25 minutes into the game, looking to end it and push it to game three. This is actually GG. Phoenix won in one of the most awesome performances that we have seen in a while. Manages to find their win and take us to the third and final game in this series. Oh my God, that game was fire. Look at how casual he is. He got a pentakill hey, and got Ryu. to beat up everybody. <laughs> and he is just, gangster about. Uh-huh. That is perfect. We've got two opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Captain Flowers and Ryu. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about Big? Big's pretty excited too. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, the yeah, only yeah, excitable yeah. person here. You have in company the LCS uh, you have company on this end. <laughs> We're pretty far away from Ryu. From this end, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's how you do it. That's how you get the 20 Woo. minute Talia Pentakill. You're just at peace mm -hmm. with yourself and the game and, and everything. Not only did he get a Pentakill, you know, not only was he, you know, so big in those team fights and, and the constant skirmishes, but I just really thought that the way they ended this game out was a thing of beauty. Baiting the bottom push, which was the super obvious clean up the easy gold, using the Talia wall to cut them off after they'd committed to that defense was just, ah, that was beautiful yeah, stuff. That was really well done. And Phoenix won, obviously, they just had great plays throughout this whole game. Starting with 14 minutes in, you can see them get a three for zero here against Dignitas. All right, right. This game, it was crazy. We had a lot of skirmishes, but this was one of the best ones, right? Uh, Big went in, he got the double charms, and Shrift was focused on this bottom skirmish. Meanwhile, uh, Mike Young had gone in and they won the mid laner 1v1, which earned them a lot of power here. So the early roam from their bottom lane, you know, plus the focus fire, gets them the kill advantage in that skirmish super early on. And this is where the game really took off, right? 14 minutes into the game, you get that many kills. They also transitioned that into the first turret gold. So a, a bunch of gold to work with, and, and that's what really started the ball rolling. And as that ball kept rolling, they kept taking control of the game. They got to the point where we saw this 17 minute base defense craziness from Dignitas as Phoenix One mounted the attack. 17 minutes into the game, inhibitor turret they're on here, and Dig, Go for an initiation with their AD carry. You can see on the minimap, not there. So the damage, large part of it is missing. That being said, uh, it was a pretty big win for Phoenix One until uh, Shady goes super deep. He's like, I'm gonna start getting some kills here. Then he flashes in here to try and kill Big, uh, misses the Q and goes down. Plus it delayed the rest of his team while there is a teleport from Someday in the backside. And he hesitated for zero seconds there. As soon as he got chunked out in the fight, immediately went to the fountain, had his game plan, uh, was able to cut off that kill. Meanwhile, the other kill is going through, and that's where it started just flying around. Everybody's picking up the money. And we thought this is where the game was going to be crazy. But if this game taught us anything, is that things will get crazier another replay for before me? they end up getting more normal. So now we're taking you to the play of the game. 
Ryu, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the Pentakill. All right, so this one starts off. Both top laners, you can see, are heading over to the skirmish. Uh, but one of them uses teleport down here to this bottom ward. And, and Zig has to go around this Talia wall. His ultimate goes the long way. And it takes forever for him to join the fight. In the end, it doesn't matter, though. Ryu was just absolutely destroying Team Dignitas with his threaded volley. Also picked up that red buff super early on. And in the end, Pentakill able to get the last one here. Zig was letting him have it. You can see him just walking circles. What a true teammate. Yep. Uh, not, not even trying to take it there. There's no possibility of it. You got two types of teammates. You got the guy who deliberately will save a spell just to steal it away from you, people like you. And then you got the people like Zig who just walk around in circles, <laughs> pretty much take the left hand off the keyboard. I'm not hitting a single thing. This is your Pentakill. That was a really cool moment for Ryu, though. And it's not like it was just there for show, either. After he had that, the amount of money, the economy surge that gave him meant that for the rest of the game, as short as it was, the game ended five minutes later, he was just able to put down so much damage and so much threat that we don't have a replay of the next big play that happened in sequence. But the thing... <laughs> The game ended. <laughs> the game ended. Yeah, we got to watch that one just a couple of seconds ago anyway. All right, but... Sorry, where were you going? No, I was no guessing... where we were going was the Twitch play where they caught, oh, not, yes. the, not the Twitch play, the Varus play where they caught out the enemy AD carry. They're thinking, oh, look, we got Arrow. This is going to be the pick. This is going to be the fight. And then it doesn't work. It's like, hey, that's not Ryu. Sorry, you lose anyway. <laughs> Dignitas, what normally would be a successful plan, isn't so successful when you're staring down the barrel of that incredibly fed mid laner. Teams are all tied up, but can Phoenix One grab their first win of the split here in game number three? That's the question. Meet us back here for the answer and the conclusion of this series. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>